Hi, I'm John from the Christian Century, and I'm joined today by the magazine's art director, Dan Richardson. We are going to talk about his role at the magazine and the art that appears on our pages and on our covers. Uh, but first, Dan, for those who don't know you, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are? Thanks, John. Hello, I'm Dan Richardson. I've worked here at the magazine since 1998. So this summer, I will be celebrating 25 years. I started as a production assistant way back when I started, just after college, and have slowly accumulated um, more duties and better job titles as I've gone along. And so now, yeah, I've been an art director since about 2009. That's and, great. Uh, yeah. When you said what year you started, I was going to jump in and joke. You started when you were only 11 years old. Uh, <laughs> It's okay. Um, you're young, you're youthful, um, but you've been here at the, at the magazine for a long time, which is really cool. Um, yes. So what is it you do for the magazine? So the, the, the title art director, many who may not know what that means at a magazine. So tell us a little bit about what, what you do. Sure. Um, I guess I should add that as with any organization like this, that's relatively small art director probably doesn't capture everything that I do, just like everybody here, I do lots of different things. Um, but anything that has to do with the printed magazine, uh, you know, the production process of the printed magazine, uh, I pretty much have a, a pretty big hand in, uh, along with Diane, the production assistant who works here part time, uh, the two of us are the production department. So we do the page layout, um, the print order, you know, processing the text from the editorial team, getting everything ready to go to, to press, uh, and then also significantly strategizing the, the visuals for each issue. So that's the process of, you know, meeting with the, the editors to find out what the lineup is for the issue, um, talking about how to achieve the right balance of approaches in terms of the visuals for any given issue, what's gonna go on the cover, what that ought to look like, um, and then, you know, I'd say trying to achieve trying to achieve a significant level of uh, balance across uh, an entire issue, and then even from issue to issue, so that they don't all look exactly the same, and that and that each piece has uh, each feature article that is, and 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 now the voices columns too have some visuals uh, has a, has a has a visual element to it that is uh, appropriate and fresh and engaging and ideally maybe in some places uh, even surprising. Yeah, that's great. And so let's talk about the visuals a little bit that appear on the pages. Some of them are from outside of our team. We commission illustrators to create art. Some of them are done by you here in house. So let's talk first about um, art done by others outside of the Christian Century team. Um, for instance, this just gorgeous wraparound cover art from Dadu Shin um, on our most recent issue, our June issue, just a really gorgeous image. Can you tell us a little bit about what it's like to work with some of these outside artists? Sure. Yeah, that's uh, it's an exciting part of my job and it's an ex expanded part of my job since we relaunched last year. Uh, working with illustrators and commissioning original work has has become a much larger part of the job. I'd say prior to relaunch, we would do commissioned illustrations maybe two or three times a year, and now we do those two or three per issue. So it's uh, it's significantly expanded, um, and really, yeah, I think that the probably the key factor in any commission is is the tone. Uh, finding, reading the article and finding what the tone of that article is, and then matching that with an illustrator uh, whose tone seems to be right in that same wheelhouse. Uh, so if it's a playful article, then the illustration is probably going to look somewhat playful. If it's a pretty serious article, then then that that illustration is going to have some editorial, you know, seriousness to it. Um, and so working with uh, Daru Shin, was an honor. I was I was not sure whether he was going to want to work with us, um, but I reached out and he said he was interested. The schedule lined up pretty well with what he was working on. So I sent him the article. I sent him pieces from his own portfolio that I found to be evocative of the kind of thing we were looking for. Uh, and then he kind of sat with it for a little while 
and maybe a week and a half later sent us three sketches uh, to consider. So we then took his sketches and had another follow up meeting where we we looked at what he was suggesting made our selection from those and then additional feedback. Um, and one of the one of the maybe most exciting things and you identified it already uh, was the fact that he opted to do the wraparound cover. I try to make that option available to our illustrators as as much as possible. Um, it doesn't always happen and uh, I'm always happy when it does, though, and I, 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 I tried to emphasize with him that the thing that I'm looking for with the wraparound illustration is uh, a challenge. Uh, no doubt it's a challenge because you want the illustration to work on its own on, on the front cover without the need to see the rest of it as it goes around the spine into the backside. But I think that the, the fun part is when illustrators can do that, so have the cover work independently, but then also have a sort of moment of surprise when they realize there's there's more to see and that that can then inform what you're seeing on the cover too. So in this in this case, it worked, I think, particularly well, because maybe given the, 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 the cover line that we used, which was uh, after deconstruction, yeah, after deconstruction, it's fun to see that there is sort of a reconstruction happening on the back or I think what makes it even more fun is is the fact that the process can be read both ways you know which side becomes the deconstruction and which one is the reconstruction is sort of up for debate uh, and so the I think the the fact that we have that back cover space to use is uh, a really exciting uh, opportunity that, that we now have uh, in the new format. Yeah, that's so cool. Thank you for sh sharing that reflection with us. Um, the other category of work, of artwork that we have on our pages and in our covers is our pieces that you yourself create, like this really excellent cover image on our April issue. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about either this particular image or about your own just process or artistry as you create these images for the magazine? Sure, yeah, thank you. Um, that April cover, I, to, to speak of it specifically, that April cover was probably one of the more challenging covers that I've that I've done on my own. And the reason that I did it was because I didn't quite know what to say to an illustrator. If I if I could have thought of a commissioned illustration direction to do for that, I might have. Uh, but because I I read the article a number of times, I loved it. Um, I, I scratched out a bunch of notes about potential ways that we could do it. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I knew more about what I didn't want to do than what I did want to do. I had more of a, a sort of a, a list of, of no's than I had uh, really viable visual directions. So um, because I knew, uh, given the article, the articles about uh, the, this uh, writer who was in the process of finding their their true name, their own name, that was not the name that they were they were given at birth. Um, I did not want to pursue any visual direction that suggested a, a fracture or a partiality. I, I wanted to project the prospect of wholeness, uh, and I wanted to project the, the, the reality that it's a, a process, a detailed and complicated process. Uh, but one that that has this prospect of wholeness at the end. Uh, and so that's how I ended up coming up with the idea of the puzzle. Uh, and then there were a few different ways to to achieve that. I, I worked digitally at first, working in Photoshop to try to make something that wasn't actually real in the real world, um, but ultimately decided that the way this was going to to read the best was to actually create the puzzle. So it was a it was a several step process. First was designing a name tag that was not distracting. We wanted the cover line to kind of exist within that name tag. Um, so I designed that first, printed it here in the office, and then with my wife's help, uh, took photos of, of that name tag on, on my shirt. Then I took that and 
created an actual puzzle. There is a company uh, that creates puzzles on demand very, very quickly, high quality, nice puzzles. I don't necessarily think they need a shout out, but anyway, uh, we uh, created the puzzle and it was back in my hands within several days. I think it was like four days, five days. Uh, and then it was a process of um, having my daughter help me put the puzzle together uh, and then reshooting the puzzle itself. And so, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a, it was a long process, but it was a, it was a good one, a rewarding one. And I'm really pleased with, uh, how, how it turned out in the end. That's, that's great. And probably not every piece you make is a, is a family project. No, that's true. Yeah. This was a special one. Um, and it made it that much more fun to be able to include everybody. I literally couldn't do it on my own. So, uh, it was great to have the help at home um, to to get the photos taken and to get the puzzle put together. Um, but yeah, actually, I think I, now that I think about it, I think I actually shot the puzzle about four times because I was looking for different lighting effects. Mm -hmm. And you know, on on the day that I was going to shoot it originally, it was a little cloudy, and I knew I wanted sort of dramatic shadow, so I was waiting for just the right amount of sunshine and just the right time of day. So I ended up shooting it several times. Uh, in all different states of of, of completion, um, and then I think maybe a little Easter egg for folks that are have that issue in hand is that you can see uh, as you look at the as you look at that image on the cover, and then on the table of contents, and then all the way with the with the feature article itself, you see that the puzzle is actually coming together uh, in that process. I am just learning this fun fact right now for the first time. That is so cool, Dan. Um, Bravo. Um, well, we could, we could talk about a ton more of these images, but the good news is new issues will be coming out each and every month with more images. You and I could hop on another call and do this again. Um, for those of you out there who may be interested in more of Dan's insights, the link will be below in the video description for the on art commentary pieces that Dan has written about different pieces of art for the magazine. Um, Dan, thank you so much for joining us and chatting. Thank you, John.